the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Welcome everyone to St. Pius X Church for this wonderful solemnity of St. Joseph, the spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And what a beautiful way to celebrate St. Joseph with our Puri Cantores Choir and their beautiful music, helping us to give praise and glory to God with our hearts, our minds, and our voices. And we ask St. Joseph to intercede for us, for our diocese, and for the church throughout the world. He is the patron saint of the universal church. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, almighty God, that by St. Joseph's intercession, your church may constantly watch over the unfolding of the mysteries of human salvation, whose beginnings you entrusted to his faithful care. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Samuel. The Lord spoke to Nathan and said, Go tell my servant David, When your time comes and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your heir after you, sprung from your loins, and I will make his kingdom firm. It is he who shall build a house for my name, and I will make his royal throne firm forever. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. Your house and your kingdom shall endure forever before me. Your throne shall stand firm forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, it was not through the law that the promise was made to Abraham and his descendants that he would inherit the world, but through the righteousness that comes from faith. For this reason, it depends on faith, so that it may be a gift, and the promise may be guaranteed to all his descendants, not to those who only adhere to the law, but to those who follow the faith of Abraham, who is the father of all of us, as it is written, 
I have made your father made you father of many nations. He is our father in the sight of God, in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead and calls into being what does not exist. He believed, hoping against hope, that he would become the father of many nations. According to what was said, thus shall your descendants be. That is why it was credited to him as righteousness. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your Our reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o Each year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the Feast of Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up according to their festival custom. After they had completed its days, as they were returning, the boy Jesus remained behind in Jerusalem. But his parents did not know it. Thinking that he was in the caravan, they journeyed for a day and looked for him among their relatives and acquaintances. But not finding him, they returned to Jerusalem to look for him. After three days, they found him in a temple, sitting in the midst of the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were astounded at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you done this to us? Your father and I have been looking for you with great anxiety. And he said to them, Why were you looking for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he said to them. He went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. The Gospel of the Lord. It is wonderful to celebrate this solemnity of St. Joseph with such beautiful music. Today, the church remembers and honors with much love and devotion the spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And I'm glad that Monsignor Schooler uncovered the statue of St. Joseph over there just for today. Then it will be covered for the rest of Lent. But hopefully you can say a little prayer to the great 
earthly father of Jesus. Imagine the great honor God bestowed upon Joseph to be the husband of the woman he chose to be the mother of his son. God chose this humble carpenter, one whom the scriptures call a just man, which means he was a righteous man who obeyed God. He was a man, Joseph was a man of great faith, the faith of Abraham that we heard about in the second reading. God, the eternal father of God the Son, called Joseph as the husband of Mary to be the earthly father of Jesus, his incarnate son, to watch over, to protect, and to teach and guide him. What an awesome vocation. And Joseph lived that vocation faithfully. With tender love, St. Joseph protected Mary and Jesus from danger, especially when Herod sought to kill the child Jesus. St. Joseph took them to safety in Egypt. He saved Jesus. That's why Joseph is called, you, I don't know if you've ever heard this before, Joseph is called the Savior of the Savior. The Savior of the Savior. It's also why the church invokes St. Joseph as the guardian and protector of the church. All of us can turn to St. Joseph to guard and protect us, not only from physical dangers, but from the spiritual danger of sin. We heard in the first reading today God's promise to King David through the prophet Nathan that he would make David's kingdom firm, that he would make his royal throne firm forever. Through Nathan, God said to David, your house and your kingdom shall endure forever before me. Your throne shall stand firm forever. This prophecy and promise was fulfilled in Jesus, who through his legal father, Joseph, was of the line of King David. We sang in the responsorial psalm, Psalm 89, the son of David will live forever. Well, it's not talking about Solomon. It's talking about Jesus, the son of David who lives and reigns forever. Jesus is the new king, born of the house of David, who came to set us free, to save us from sin and death. He inaugurated the kingdom of God on earth, of which we are part as members of his church. And within this kingdom, we honor the Blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of the king, and we honor Saint Joseph, his foster father. They intercede for us that we may be faithful disciples of their son, our savior and our king. Mary and Joseph loved Jesus with all their hearts. They raised him in their home in Nazareth. They fed him and taught him. They were faithful Jews and they prayed with him. They brought him to Jerusalem for the feasts, as we heard in today's gospel, to celebrate the feast of Passover. Now that was a great feast for the Jewish people, celebrating the Israelites' liberation from slavery in Egypt. Jesus was 12 years old, an adolescent, soon to be considered a man. Jewish boys were considered men when they turned 13. Jesus must have been very happy and excited to join with his cousins and relatives and friends in the caravan from Nazareth to Jerusalem. After the eight days of the Passover feast in Jerusalem, the caravan began the three-day journey back to Nazareth. It was about 75 miles, so they would do about 25 miles a day. Mary and Joseph presumed Jesus was with them until after a day's journey, they realized he was missing. 
We can only imagine their fear and anxiety because traveling through that area alone could be dangerous. They went back to Jerusalem searching for their son and only found him after three days. And they were astonished to find him sitting in the midst of the rabbis in the temple, listening to them and asking them questions. And then the rabbis were astounded at Jesus' understanding and his answers. As you know, the finding of the child Jesus in the temple is the fifth joyful mystery of the rosary. And it was a joyful event when Mary and Joseph found Jesus. But it was also a very, it was first a very sorrowful mystery in that they were afraid and anxious about Jesus' safety. In fact, the loss of the child Jesus is one of the seven sorrows of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Mary even said to Jesus, Son, why have you done this to us? Your father and I have been looking for you with great anxiety. Of course they were anxious as any loving parent would be if their child was lost for three days. Why did Jesus do this to them? Of course, Jesus was without sin and would never show disrespect or disobedience to his parents. But he stayed behind because as he explained, he had to be in his father's house. Though Mary and Joseph did not understand what he said to them, they needed to learn that their son had a mission from the father that took precedence in his life. And lest we think that Jesus was not obedient to his parents, St. Luke tells us that Jesus returned to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them. This story is the only event in the Gospels after Jesus' infancy that we, have, that we have about Jesus until he was 30 years old. So from the time he's 12 to 30, there's nothing in the Gospels about those 18 years. We call these years the hidden years of Jesus, his hidden life. We know as St. Luke's Gospel tells us that Jesus grew in wisdom and age and grace before God and men. He grew physically and intellectually. He learned from his holy parents. He learned the trade of carpentry from Joseph. We can imagine the many hours they spent together in the carpentry shop and the close, intimate relationship between father and son. We don't know exactly when St. Joseph died but most likely it was before Jesus began his public ministry because Joseph isn't mentioned as present again in the Gospels. Like he wasn't there at the wedding feast of Cana. If he was still alive, he would have gone, I'm sure, with Mary and Jesus to the wedding feast. One of my favorite paintings of St. Joseph is one that uh, many of you have probably seen in the Basilica of the Sacred Heart at Notre Dame. If you go around the sanctuary to the right, big, beautiful painting of the death of St. Joseph with Mary and Joseph, Mary and Jesus at Joseph's side as he passed away from this life. Looking at that painting, as I said, it's my favorite painting in the Basilica. If you haven't seen it, just, just look up and, and the tenderness. You can see and feel the deep love of the Holy Family when you look at that painting. The church looks to St. Joseph as the patron saint of a happy death because what greater happiness than to die with Mary and Jesus at our side. I encourage all of you to be devoted to St. Joseph, to go to him with your prayers, especially you who are fathers and husbands. All of us can go to him 
with confidence in his loving protection. And to all of you young students, some of you the same age or around the same age as Jesus was in today's gospel, 12, may you also have devotion to Saint Joseph like Jesus had. Saint Joseph's goodness and love as Jesus' earthly father is an image of the goodness and love of God the Father. May St. Joseph intercede for all of us and watch over your families with his love. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With confidence in the mercy and love of God, let us offer him our petitions. For Pope Francis, Bishop Kevin Rhodes, and all who helped to shepherd the church, May the Holy Spirit strengthen them in their proclamation of the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our nation's government and for world leaders, may they always work for peace, and may the laws they enact demonstrate respect for the dignity of all human life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our Catholic schools and for the families who strive to live and teach the faith today, through the intercession of St. Joseph, may they always bring the children entrusted to them closer to Jesus Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the mission of Pierre Contortes and that the church's treasury of sacred music may lift many hearts and minds to reverent worship. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those troubled with severe illness, or other serious burdens, may they find hope and peace in Christ and his sacraments. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died in Christ, may they rest forever in the presence of God at the heavenly liturgy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Eternal Father, hear the prayers we offer you and grant that one day we may join St. Joseph and all the saints in the endless song of praise 
that resounds in the halls of heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We pray, O Lord, that just as St. Joseph served with loving care your only begotten Son, born of the Virgin Mary, so we may be worthy to minister with a pure heart at your altar, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. And on the solemnity of St. Joseph, to give you fitting praise, to glorify you and bless you. For this just man was given by you as spouse to the Virgin Mother of God, and set as a wise and faithful servant in charge of your household, to watch like a father over your only begotten Son, who was conceived by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exultation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them, we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them. For the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, 
living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and mothers, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sistus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos, and Damien, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O oh God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. 
Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, and graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. to the Holy 
Let us pray. <clears throat> Defend with unfailing protection, O Lord, we pray, the family you have nourished with food from this altar as they rejoice at the solemnity of St. Joseph and graciously keep safe your gifts among them. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before the final blessing, we'd like to thank Monsignor Schooler for hosting this Puerri Cantores, our annual Puerri Cantores Mass uh, here at St. Pius. Thank you so much to you and to your staff and to your parochial vicar, Father Augustine. And thank you, Father Andrew, pastor at St. Matthew's Cathedral for celebrating today. Uh, very special thanks to Jeremy Hoy, the director of this wonderful choir and all of the music teachers and directors from the schools who help prepare these young people. Um, it's a little taste of heaven, isn't it? I wanna thank you because you just sang probably my favorite hymn. Mozart's Ave Verum Corpus, and you did it beautifully. So thank you so much. I feel like I'm ready for Holy Week now. So really very beautiful. Um, all of you, thanks again, Jeremy. Um, and I hope you've enjoyed this opportunity um, to, to learn to sing such beautiful music. Um, and I hope you'll continue to sing in your parishes and your schools to share this gift that God has given you, the gift of singing, the gift of music. So congratulations. Let's just show our appreciation to all of them. The Lord be with you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now and forever. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to proclaim the gospel by your life. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. God, rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits, prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls.